Good morning, church. Good morning. How's everybody doing? It's fine. Wet. Wet and cloudy, but beautiful day nonetheless. The Lord said we need more rain. He knows what he's doing. He's in charge. And I guess he gave us the wisdom to come in out of the rain. Didn't he? Sometimes. <laughs> sure is glad to have everybody here this morning. Uh, those of you that are joining us on YouTube this morning, we just ask you just to let loose, let the Holy Spirit have his way. We're so thrilled and pleased to have Brother Tim Todd here again, Evangelist Tim Todd, and his wife, Sister Angie. They're dear friends of mine. Brother Todd has helped me in a few situations over the years. He is a godly brother. And I am, I am excited this morning to hear what the Lord has to say this morning. Amen. Yes. Yes. From the book of Psalms, chapter 40, David would say this. This is a praise for an answered prayer. And I think we can say it unequivocally that God answers prayer. Amen. Yes. God answers prayer, church. Yes. David would say this. I waited patiently. There's the key. Do yes. we wait patiently? For the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me out of a horrible pit. Before you came to Christ, yeah. you were in a pit. Right. And I don't know about y'all, but my pit was awful deep. Mm -hmm. It was awful deep. He brought me out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Your feet is on anything other than the rock, which is Christ Jesus. You're no sinking sand. Right. You're going down. You're not going up. You're not staying still. You are going down this morning. Right. But I love it. Once your feet are on that rock, this is what David would say now. This is where I pray. I hope every one of us here this morning in the sound of my voice on YouTube can say they're saved, they're washed in the blood of the Lamb, and now they're on the rock. Because if you can say that from your heart outward, this is what you need to do with us this morning. David would say this in verse 3. He has put a new song in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. praise yeah. under our God. And many shall see it. Many will fear. And many will trust in the Lord. He would close this by saying, Blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust. Amen? There's the key right there. Yeah. Not trusting in man. Man's going to fail. I don't care what man it is. Right. We're a fallen creation. Right. We have that Adamic nature. We are a fallen creation of Adam. But I know this. This morning, God brought me out of that mire clay. Yes. 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 He took me out of that pit. When I was unlovable, he loved me. Yes. yes. He knew me long before I was in the womb of my mother, the same as all of you. Yes. He went to the cross, shed his blood and died for everyone here. Everyone watching this morning, he died for each one of us. Yes. And if he came this morning to bless the Lord and to praise his name, I'll tell you this right now. He came to the right house. Yeah. Yeah. If you came expecting a blessing from the Lord, you came to the right house. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Heavenly Father, you, Father, we come to you this morning in the name above all names, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Father. Father, we thank you for Calvary. We thank you for the precious, precious blood that your son Jesus shed on that yes. cross. That he poured out his life's blood for thank the remission you. of sins. Yes. And Lord, we say this morning, we cannot do anything. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. In this morning, Lord, we come before the throne of grace, asking for thy Holy Spirit to take over, to take over everything, that everything that is done or said will bring you glory and honor. We must have your anointing this morning. Yes, Father. Well, this morning we come. Your word says, yes, Jesus Father. said on the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are they, blessed are they with hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Lord, we are hungry this morning. We are thirsty this morning yes. to hear from you. Nothing else will do. Yes. This world, no man, no method of man will do. Only thy spirit will do, O oh Lord. Yes. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all of God's children amen. said, Amen and amen. amen. Come on, sisters. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>
very much. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Holy Spirit of the living God, we welcome you in the remainder of this service to do in us everything that you want done. Father, I know that you are going to speak to this powerful church and that you are going to inject into their spiritual veins exactly what they need today. Yes. And so, Lord, I pray and I speak, decree, and declare, profess, and proclaim victory yes. in every area of everybody that makes up this church body yes. and those that are watching by way of YouTube. Yes. I speak victory spiritual, physical, financial, emotional victory yes. in every area. Yes. And Lord, I plead the precious blood of Jesus Christ over the doorpost of the homes yes. of everybody that yes. makes up this church body yes. and those that are watching right now by way of social media. And Lord, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And I decree miracles, signs, and wonders to flow mightily in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen and Amen. Let's give the Lord another big hand by the way. Amen. And so thankful for what God is going to do in your life in this service this morning. And, uh, you know, I'm not really sure uh, if I'm supposed to stay behind this pulpit. You you can see your pastor is a lot taller than I am. I, I feel like, uh, uh, you know, it always helps uh, whenever you've got a, a, a for, for my height to have a lower pulpit. Amen? So if you don't mind, I'm going to step out here. I don't usually need a brother. Hallelujah. And I'm going to get right down here uh, so that I can get close to you. And, uh, but uh, I tell you, it is a joy and an honor to be here today. And I tell you, I just thank the world of your pastor, Jim, and his precious wife, Sherry. And how many of you appreciate your pastor? How many of you appreciate I think the great days are in store for this church body. And God is going to do mighty, mighty things to this church body. What wisdom to start with this facility right here before you springboard into what the Lord has at the next level. What wisdom. And you know what? Wisdom like that comes from the Holy Spirit Amen. and is imparted into the leadership, not only of your precious pastor and his wife, but the leadership that, that uh, Pastor Jim and Sherry have surrounded them with, with men and women of God like yourself. So thank you for being sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? I tell you, the Lord is just moving mightily in these last days. And I want to see if I can uh, uh, just, uh, if you bear witness with this, there has been a higher level of intensity of attacks from the enemy in our family and in the ministry that God has called us to over the past couple of years and at the same time the Lord, at a higher level of intensity, has been pouring out the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're seeing more people get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, delivered, and set on fire right now through the ministry of Revival Fighters that I'm the president of than we have in 35 years of full-time being on the evangelistic field. God is moving mightily, and we're so thankful for what God is doing. We are giving away more Bibles than we've ever given away before. God has opened up more avenues of preaching the gospel than ever before. And at the same time, we're so thankful for what God is doing as a result of it. In fact, I'm going to give you a, a tremendous victory report for you. Uh, and that I know that you will rejoice with us over this. <clears throat> it's been about three years ago, the Lord spoke to our heart about going on national radio across America with a message of repentance and revival, the cross of Calvary,
the blood of Jesus Christ, which is a message that you don't hear preached from behind a lot of pulpits today. Thank God it is preached here in this church body. Amen. Thank God that the truth is preached from the pulpit in this in this uh, sanctuary and, and in this church body. But the Lord spoke to our heart about going on national radio, on American Family Radio. As you know, we've got a relationship with American Family Radio now for 21 years. But I've actually never had a radio broadcast on American Family Radio, but I knew God spoke to our heart about doing it. So I did not approach them immediately. And then they began to approach me about allowing <coughs> our radio broadcast to be on for special holidays like Christmas and New Year's. And, and uh, they were letting us do that free of charge. And, and I'm, we're talking about a, a listening audience of more than 10.5 million people. So we were getting a phenomenal response from that. And uh, then we went on local radio. I hear and many of you uh, perhaps have heard our broadcast at 7.30 a.m. because you're not in church at that time. Uh, if you're up that early, and we're on, on news talk because I wanted to target the unsaved. And so we're on news talk KMLB 105.7 FM at 5.40 a.m. here locally now for about a little over two years now. And, and we've had great response from that with people getting saved. But right before Easter, I was approached by American Family Radio with a 10.30 a.m. time slot. Christians are in church at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning, but unbelievers are not in church. We've been on the, uh, the radio, uh, and we've been on every week now, ever since the date I'm getting ready to tell you. This is so powerful because we're having phenomenal response with people getting right with the Lord as a result of this broadcast. But the first broadcast was Easter Sunday morning. And the first salvation email that I received was from a, uh, Easter Sunday morning, was from a truck driver that was driving through Little Rock, Arkansas. He heard the broadcast, and it is a preaching broadcast, preaching repentance and revival. And he heard the broadcast, and the Holy Spirit grabbed hold of his heart. This individual pulled over on the, in his truck, an 18-wheeler, pulled over on the side of the road, and he made an altar, these were his words, he made an altar out of the guardrail, got down on his knees and asked Jesus to forgive him of his sins and he's serving the Lord. Praise Somebody God. give the Lord a hand. Praise Praise God. God. And we are getting hundreds of emails from individuals that are getting right with the Lord on a regular basis as a direct result of what God is doing with the Revival Fires radio broadcast on American Family Radio every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. So while we were in here this morning, worshiping the Lord at 10.30 this morning, uh, our radio broadcast began. And so if you will please pray for that outlet of, of evangelism outreach that God has given us at that door that God has given us. Amen. Now, how many of you know there's no free lunches? Okay, so I will tell you, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you because you can pray that God will uh, put in place everything. We knew God said go on the radio, but this radio broadcast that we're doing every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m., they're not giving us that time. That time is costing us, now this is going to sound like a lot of money, but when you consider what God is doing through this broadcast, and America needs a message of repentance and revival right now Amen. more than ever before. Amen. And when you hear this, you'll know that it's worth every penny of this for us to be able to be on in the, the uh, time slot that we're on uh, on a weekly basis. This broadcast is costing us $5,000 a month. So right now, you pray about this. Right now, we are believing God, Pastor Jim, for 50 people to give $100 a month to help us, churches or people, to give us a hundred, uh, to, to give $100 a month to pay for this broadcast. And if the Holy Spirit speaks that to your heart, if you want to see me at the close of the service, I can let you know how you can do that. And I want to say this, for those of you that already uh, support the ministry of Revival Fires on a regular basis, we thank you, thank you, thank you, 
We pray, Angie and I, we pray every day for our uh, flame partners that God will meet every need that you have. And I call you at, by name. If you're a partner with our ministry, I call you by name. Bring you before the Lord every every day so that God will meet the needs that you have. And, and how many of you know that it's partnerships? God could just open up heaven, Pastor Jim, and just shovel money down and say, here's the money that you need. But God doesn't choose to do that. What God chooses to do is to use the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. To use the body of Christ to accomplish the work that God is doing in these last days. So, so thank you in advance for your prayerful consideration to partner with the ministry of Revival Fires to help us with this Revival Fires radio broadcast with a message of repentance and revival for America. One more thing before I get into the Word of God, and I need your prayer about this. Right when the election took place, now, I can give you my opinion on the election, but that's not... That is not important. Okay? But in November, when the election took place, I was praying because I knew, and Angie, if you would, would you go get me one of those Spanish Truth View Bibles real quick? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna share what uh, what God is. It's a brand new door that God has opened up. And this opened up, um, I believe the first time I went over there was in uh was it May the 9th, I believe. Um so, when the election took place, I was praying about this because how many of you know that because of the direction that the election went, the floodgates of our borders opened up and uh, uh, the coyotes and the different ones, they started approaching families in Honduras and Guatemala in Venezuela and some other countries and said, hey, Come on over to America right now. The doors are open and everybody can come in. How many of you know that's not good for America? That's not good for America. But how many of you know that they're coming? They're coming. Now, I don't want them to be coming illegally into America. But guess what? They're coming. And there are more young people coming into America from these Honduras, Guatemala, Mexico, other countries than ever in the history of our nation. They are flooding our borders, especially the South Texas border. So I knew that I had a tool, a Bible, with comic stories in the front section that deal with the truth about things like drugs and drunkenness and peer pressure and pornography and sexual purity, abortion, homosexuality. We deal with the truth about witchcraft and cutting, sexting, bullying, so there's all kinds of things that young people are up against on a regular basis. Along with the entire New Testament, obviously, in Spanish. And, uh, of course, we, we put these in place because of Cuba. But the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart to prepare to put these Bibles into the hands of the undocumented immigrants coming into America. So I began to pray about this and had no idea how in the world this was going to come together because I knew we're dealing with the federal government that is not sympathetic of the gospel going into the hands of these undocumented immigrants. And, and so I was approached by a pastor of a small church in South Texas that is best friends with a facility director that has... 2,000 undocumented immigrants, young men, ages 12 to 18, every two weeks. At the end of the two weeks, these undocumented uh, young people are either going into foster care here in America, they're either going into a family member's home here in America, or they go back to Central America. But they are in that facility for two weeks. Two weeks. And this facility director that is spirit-filled in South Texas was begging that pastor for Bibles to put into the hands of these undocumented immigrants. I got on a three-way call with him. Everything was put into place, and the first time that I went to, and they allowed me to preach to these undocumented immigrant young men, 2,000 young men aged 12 to 18, if they have any religion at all, at all it's Catholicism, and they are not serving the Lord. They are not serving the Lord. The first service that we had, 
with these undocumented young men ages 12 to 18 years old. Of the 2,000 young men that I was able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with, I was able to preach in that facility three different times because they social distanced these young men. All of them are having, the, they're wearing masks and, and uh, uh, many of them uh, uh, are, are suicidal. There's a high rate of suicide among these young men and young ladies that are coming in. And the government officials were in there uh, uh, throughout the facility, where the, the chapel of the facility where that I was preaching. But I gave the altar call for salvation in three different services. Of the 2,000 young men that I was able to preach to, 2,000 more come in. So every two weeks, 2,000 Bibles. Pray that God will put everything into place for that. We need 50,000 of the Spanish Truth for You Bibles immediately. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, excited to express to you that our home church uh, in West Monroe, and I'm not a pastor, I'm an evangelist, but our home church decided that they were going to try to cover the expense of 2,000 young men uh, for one of the uh, uh, for one of the uh, uh, two week periods, two thousand young men. They were going to try to, uh, which would be four thousand dollars, and uh, they received a special offering uh, to help us to cover four thousand dollars, two thousand Bibles, and and you know what the offering was? Twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars. That is going towards ordering the 50,000 Bibles, which is $100,000. So you pray that God puts everything into place for these Bibles to be, to get, uh, for us to be able, that will give us enough Bibles to last for about a year, about a year. And, uh, but I'm going there, what is it, Angie, July the 19th, just in a few days, where that I personally will be able to preach to these young men. Of course, it will be a completely different set of young men than, Last time I was there, since they're in and out, rotating in and out every two weeks. So you pray that every one of those young men, not just 1,997, but all 2,000 of them, will give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. <clears throat> and those three young men that didn't get saved in that service, they at least got a, a, a Spanish Truth to You Bible with the gospel of Jesus Christ in it. So thank God for what the Lord is doing with this door of the evangelism and thank you in advance for praying for us that God will put everything into place. We still need to raise a little over $28,000 before we can place the order for the 50,000 Bibles. That's $100,000 for 50,000 Bibles. So you pray with us that God will put in place the $28,000. And what I'm sharing with you folks, I'm telling you, what I'm sharing with you, this is powerful evangelism outreach that God is doing in the last of the last days. You know, a lot of uh, crusades, uh, one uh, myself included, that we had in Delicious, Mexico, that we had in place that we were going to, to uh, be conducting in uh, Delicious, Mexico, had to be shut down because of COVID. But look at this. Now, now here's all of these undocumented young men coming into America, and we are able, that God's bringing them to us. And we're able to put a Bible in their hands and then introduce them to Jesus in their heart. So thank you for praying that God will do the work that needs to be done. Amen? Amen. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 18. I love the Word of God. How about you? Amen. 1 Kings chapter 18. We've got our table over here right beside us in this beautiful facility. Uh, uh, I encourage you to stop by uh, over there and I've got ammunition to hit the devil in the head with giant print Bibles, t-shirts, revivalist <coughs> t-shirts, everything that you could possibly imagine that would help you to live for God and hit the devil in the head. So I encourage you to avail yourself to those items uh, uh, when you leave this morning. If you will, stand with me in reverence to God for the reading of our text. 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 20 to 39. And before I do read the Word of God, Pastor, let me say one more thing, and that is that at the close of the service, when Pastor receives a special offering for the ministry of Revival Fires, 
We're going to let Angie 100% of this offering this morning go towards uh, 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 offsetting the expense for these undocumented immigrants. Nothing will go into our pocket personally, and it will not just go into revival fires. It will go specifically to help us provide these Bible for these undocumented immigrants. So thank you in advance as the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. First Kings chapter 18, verses 20 to 39. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together into Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. Now, let's stop right there. Isn't that like a lot of people in the church today? If I'm up here preaching on things that we all agree with, like uh, uh, to preach against uh, homosexuality or abortion or that we need to get prayer and Bible reading back in school in here. We all say, let them have it, preacher, preach it. But whenever I start stepping on your toes, then we answer, not a word. Verse 22. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, let them choose one bullock for themselves, Cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first for ye are many. And call on the name of your gods but put no fire under, and they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no there, there was no voice nor any to answer, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god, either he is talking or pursuing, or he is in a journey or pre-adventure he sleepeth and must be awake. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was passed, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid it of him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, that I am thy servant, that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is the God, the Lord is. He is the God. Keep your Bibles open to that passage of Scripture as I'm going to refer back to it several times as I break this passage of Scripture down this morning. And the title of my message this morning, When Will the Fire Fall? I believe that is a very, very important question. And I'm going to answer it today. I would be for a word of prayer. Father, speak to us through your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen, amen. and Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. Throughout the Bible, fire symbolizes the presence and the power of God. Amen? amen. By fire, sacrifice. 
sacrifices were offered up to God. By fire, God led Israel out of Egyptian bondage. By fire, the Holy Ghost came down on the day of Pentecost. By fire, one day, our works will be judged. You see, fire warms, fire guides, fire judges, fire lights, and fire will sterilize. We need the fire of God to do that to us today, right here. Where will the fire fall? I'm going to mention several things that we're going to have to have, Pastor Jim, if the Holy Ghost revival fire of God is going to fall for us, and we need the fire of God to fall. Listen, I believe in the fundamental truths of this word, but I like what world preacher said. He said you can be as straight as a gun barrel and just as empty. You can be fun fundamentally correct and still have no fire. Right. It'll be nothing but deadly. You see, it's the letter that kills, but it's the spirit that maketh the life. And we need the fundamental truth of this word. And I believe in men and women standing for truth, but in standing for the truth of God's word, we need the fire and the power of God's holy presence in our church today. Amen? Amen. When will the fire fall? First of all, the fire will fall when God's prophets come together. we got to do it. Ahab's the one that called the convocation. You know that's not the only way you can get God's preachers together anymore. It's because of a circumstance that's been brought upon him or ushered upon him by the heathen in the land. But regardless of what it's going to take, we need God's men and women that have been called into the ministry have got to come together. I'm not talking about ecumenicism. I'm not talking about the unbelieving. I'm not talking about the liberal or the wicked, but I'm talking about men and women of God who believe this Bible, who believe that it's an errant and infallible and a no mixture of error. I say it's time that God's prophets come together, put our hands to the plow and our shoulders to the wheel, and march on and do something for God. Amen. But you see, the problem is we've forgotten that we're one faith, one baptism. We have one Lord. Satan has divided and conquered, and the church as a whole has been divided over trivial issues in the past. We've been divided over how long a woman's hair ought to be in some of our churches. Whether or not she wears makeup or rouge or jewelry. I heard about a preacher that got in an elevator back when Under Arms Spray Dover first came out, and he was wearing some. And a man on the elevator looked at the preacher and said, Shoo! Some man in here's got an Under Arms Spray Dover in. That preacher looked at him and said, Shoo! Some man in here hadn't got an Under Arms Spray Dover in. <laughs> but you see, this man was offended because a preacher would wear the over it. Fifty years ago, when I was a little boy growing up in the ministry, it was an abomination for a preacher to wear a colored shirt to preach in. I hear people say, hey, brother, don't you know that all preachers are supposed to wear black shirts? You're too loud. You, and you got all those funny-looking ties, too. You're just trying to draw attention to yourself. But you know that's the attitude of a lot of people in our churches today. They look at the outward appearance and things of external. But, friend, there's some major things in the Word of God that we ought to be able to come together on. Some are, some are divided about the music. They say, well, the music's too loud, or the music's too long, or the music's too soft, or the music's too strong. And the thing about it is, we're living in a day in a religious world where there's a group of people in the, in the church that want you to be just like they are. They want you to clone you. They want you to part your hair just the way that they part it. Oh. Lost every theological key that they want. God, every theological eye that they got. And if you don't, then they're not going to have any fellowship with you because you're not of their type and you're not of their strike and you're not of their kind. You know what I've got to say about that religious group in the church? But friend, there's something we ought to be able to come together on. That is this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, if we'll just sing and preach Jesus and the cross... But another problem we've got, we've got too many people in the church today that have got the spotlight syndrome. They want the spotlight on themselves. As long as they're doing the singing, as long as they're doing the preaching, as long as they're doing the exhorting, then they're in the spirit. But you let somebody else get up here and they'll die. <laughs> Listen, they got right in the pews. I've seen singers and they're not the worst. Somebody said when the devil was kicked out of heaven, he fell in the choir loft. <laughs> There's only one room meaner than singers and that's preachers. But I've seen singers get up and they'll, they'll sing and cry and get blessed. Ooh, praise God. But, and yeah, but they're finished. They'll sit down. Somebody else gets up here. They'll pop bottle gum. They'll pull out their smartphone, get on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, start texting their friends. Oh. <laughs> Elijah's the one that called them together. Friend, our churches are divided. Not only do the prophets of God need to get together one with another, but our churches need to get together. You know our churches are divided with regard to attendance. I've never lived in a day when church attendance was so optional like it is today. 
You say to some people, you're going to be in church on Sunday? They say, well, Aunt Susie's cousin's uncle's brother's going to have a reunion over yonder, and Sunday's the only day they've got to go to. Why don't they have those rock reunions on Monday? You don't want to have them on Sunday because people think more of their job than they think of God. We're divided as whether or not we go to church on Sunday morning or Sunday night. Some say, I can't drive. I had a lady come up to me after a, a revival service on Sunday morning, and, and, and she said, now, Brother Todd, she said, I'd be in church tonight for the revival service. She said, but I can't see well enough to get out and drive at night. I looked at her, and I said, well, my wife and I will stop by and pick you up on the way into church. She looked at me, and she said, well... <laughs> These people say, I've got young ones going to school and you folks old so late. Then they'll stay up till 11 o'clock every other night. Yeah. Uh, and there are some people that today, they're in church. The first thing they want to know when they get there is, when do we get out? Yeah. <laughs> what time will it be over? Listen, and we're divided as whether or not we pay tithe and give offerings too. That's another thing that's wrong with our churches today. We've got too many thieves and robbers sitting in the pews. Sitting there with clothes on that are stolen, driving up in stolen automobiles, living in stolen houses. The Bible says, will a man rob God? And it said, yes, you robbed me because you robbed me and tithe an offering. Now, people don't like you preaching like that, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. You're in here right now. We'll just lock those doors. You say, well, you're not as nice as Pastor Jim. I never claimed to be. And if you get up and leave right now, we'll know why. <laughs> but if you're not faithful to pay your tithe and give your offerings to the Lord's work, you're a thief and a robber and you're stealing from God. We're divided and with regard to our, uh, uh, our families. Listen, when I was a boy growing up in, in, in uh, church, it wasn't a matter whether or not I wanted to go to Sunday school. I knew that when Sunday came, I better be dressed and ready. I was going to Sunday school. It wasn't a matter whether or not I wanted to go to church. I was made to go to church. And now, I thank God that I was made to go. We're divided with regard to worship. Some people come to church and they worship God, and some people come to church and they just sit. There are fault those in the church that, that, that during worship they fold their arms, they cross their legs, they'll sit there, and I don't care what you do, you can't move. Preach on heaven, they'll look at you like this. Preach on hell, same thing. You know what they're saying? They're saying, bless me if you can, preacher. Get me all wrapped up every now and then if I hear what I'm saying. Amen. But there's a lot of people that come to church that don't really worship God. And hear me this morning. The fire of God will not fall until God's people come together on God's terms. When will the fire fall? When they learn how to draw the line. That's what Elijah did. Elijah said, here's the line, fellas. Over here's Baal's pub. Over here's Jehovah's crap. Now get on one side of the other. Don't you think that it's time that we draw the line today? Fence travelers make rotten soldiers. I was witnessing to a wealthy man on an airplane en route to a revival in Houston, Texas. And he interrupted me. He said, now preacher, it just seems like the grass is so much greener on the other side of the fence. I said, yes sir, and that's generally because there's a septic tank on the other side of the fence. I was at a pastor's conference a few weeks ago, and I had a pastor walk up to me and he said, what kind of church do you attend? I said, well, I said, at our home church, we're saved of the grace of God, believe in Jesus, we're Holy Ghost filled with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And he looked at me and he said, well, he said, at our church, with regard to the baptism in the Holy Spirit, he said, we just try to go down the middle of the road. I said, you get your brains knocked out going down the middle of the road. You ever met this crowd that tries to get in the middle of the road? Listen, friend, you better get on one side or the other, or you're going to have a head on collision. Middle of the road, nothing. You've got to love God and hate sin. It's an either or situation. We need to draw the line with regard to dedication. We need to draw the line with regard to our destination. We need to draw the line with regard to this scripture, my friend. We need to stick with the crowd that believes the way that we believe with regard to this Bible. Hear me tonight, today. I believe that this word is inspired. It's God breathed. It's infallible. It's certain. It's sure. It's settled. It's inerrant. It's literally being interpreted. I believe in the word of God. We need to settle that thing. I haven't got used to this crowd that don't believe in the virgin birth, don't believe in the rapture, the reign of Jesus, don't believe in heaven or hell, don't believe in the great white phone judgment, don't believe in nothing. Listen, friend, we need to get back to the word of God and stand firm on this Bible. Get on one side of the other. Then we need to settle it and get on the right side of the line with the part of what we believe about about. Uh, uh, Jesus. Not only this Bible, but Jesus. Hear me today. He's more than a man. 
He's the incarnate Son of God. He's the only sacrifice for sin. He's our coming King. Then we need to settle it and get on the right side of the line with regard to what we believe about false prophets. You see what Elijah did with the false prophets of Baal? He mocked them. He said, cry aloud, for he's a God. He's on a journey. He's talking or pursuing. He said, maybe he's just asleep. He's got night night. You just got to wake him up. <laughs> you know, if that would have been today's, one of today's average first church preachers, they would have complimented that crowd. They would have, they would have said, well, I was really impressed by all that loud praying that you folks were doing. And that long, dedicated effort that you put forth from morning to noon, you're to be commended for that. Oh, and that nice altar that you built. And the way that you skillfully dress that bullock. And something else that was a big blessing to me is, is that brother over there, ha ha, he leaped. <laughs> and you know, something else that I really appreciate is that is, is, uh, all of that, that, after that old fundamental Elijah mocked you all, you just kept on in hell. Your sincerity. And when I saw your sincerity, how did you cut yourself to those nines and lances? I thought, now there's got to be something to that religion that they've got. Now, isn't that what a lot of people in our churches today would have said? Listen, I haven't got a compliment one for this crowd that don't believe that Jesus is God's only Son. Don't believe that the Bible is the only inspired Word of God. I haven't got a thing for them. All I can say is they need to get right with God. Amen. Amen. Then we've got a, a group in, in the church that, that when they're witnessing the people, they'll look at them and they'll say, they'll finish by saying, Well, you just go ahead and attend the church of your choice. Yeah. Hogwash. Amen. I would never tell anybody to do that. My friend, you stay in a Bible-believing church like this one right here. Yeah. Hear me today. The cause of Christ has been cheapened by undeserved compliments to the religious world that are as far from God and far from this Bible as they possibly can be. Right. They're not doing a great work. And I hear people say, oh, but that church, that, what about all those big numbers and those magnificent buildings? And look, that church is in who's who. Huh. Mm. When's the last time you heard one of those preachers get in the pulpit and draw a line for commitment? When's the last time you heard one of those preachers get in the pulpit and preach on the subject of the cross of Calvary and the blood of Jesus Christ like your pastor does? When's the last time you heard about uh, one of those preachers get in the pulpit and, and draw a line for commitment? Listen to me. When will the fire fall? When God's prophets come together? When we draw the line? When we stop making excuses? And when we put the religious world on the spot? And when we stop showing respect to heresy? Now here's something else. We've been going on pretty good. This is going to hit the nail right in the head. Are you ready? Yeah. Buckle your seatbelts. The fire will fall when you get near to the man of God. Amen. It's right here. Verse 30. Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. You know, pastors like Pastor Jim Green that is, has a high level of integrity and character. Pastors that love God and love their family and love the flock that God has them oversee. Pastors like that, let me just put it this way, you, you're blessed to have Pastor Jim Amen. and Sherry Amen. Green Amen. as your pastor. Amen. Now listen to this, you're not worth the power it would take to blow your brains out if you won't stand up and defend Pastor Jim when people talk behind his back. Amen. Amen. And, and those that claim to be Christians, they'll try to put a spiritual spin on it. They'll say it like this, you know, Pastor Jim's doing something I don't agree with, and I'm, I'm going to tell you what it is so you'll know how to pray for it. <laughs> the Bible calls that sowing discord among the brethren, gossip, backbiting, whispering. Amen. And I hear people say, well, don't you know that all preachers are crooks, all their actors are money, they're not for real. You better get near to the man of God. You better, be a, you, you better stay in a church like this one where you can have confidence in that pastor is being the man of God who's watching out for your soul. You better get up as close to him as you can and listen to every word he's got to say. It might mean the difference between heaven and hell for you and your family. Hear me today. God's man has the message, and it's not from the board of directors. It's not from a socialist, liberalist, big brain trust. It's not from some pole. It's not from a philosopher or an economist. It, but the message is straight from the throne room of God, and God is the one who's in ultimate control. But the church today has lost respect for the man of God. He's a whipping boy to be criticized. He's an errand boy to do all the little menial tasks. He's a 
It says he built an altar in the name of the Lord. I like that part. Why would we take the altar areas like this out of so many of our church bodies? In a lot of our churches today, there isn't any place for people to come forward and pray. Before I came along, it was called a mortar's bench. A bench right across the front of the pastor would finish his message. He'd say, anybody want to come mourn for sin? Anybody want to come and get right with God? Listen, come on down. That was before the days of the Price is Right. <laughs> or Bob Barker or, or, or uh, Let's Make a Deal. And how many of you know you don't make a deal with God anyway? But people would be trembling under the power of God. They'd come running for an old-fashioned altar. They'd get down on their knees and they'd pray through. Today, a lot of people don't want to pray through anymore. They just want to get through praying. Right. <laughs> Why don't we want to pray through and somebody in our churches today? Because we've got too much rotten religious stinking pride. I've been told of the days where people were called upon to come and unload. Anybody want to come and unload? Come on down to the altar. You see, an altar is a place to die to yourself. That's our problem. Yeah. Too many of our church people reject dying to self. But it says, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Not in the name of the Baptist or the Methodist or the Presbyterian or the <coughs> Assemblies of God or the Church of God or any other denomination. But it says, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Why have we taken our altar areas out of so many of our churches? You know why? Because somebody's liable to come forward and get down on their knees, get to squalling and crying and get the load lifted and make an emotional mess. And that would offend too many people in our churches today. Amen. Yeah, exactly. A preacher over in Denver, Colorado was called the pastor of church. The church needed to grow and he wanted the church to grow. This pastor said they had a little tongue-tied lady in their church by the name of Mary. About every other service, Mary would stand up and she would just blurt out. Right in the middle of praise and worship, Mary would stand up and she'd say, Preacher! Y'all God, God been so good to me! Could I please, please play a song for the church and sing it? The pastor said she could not sing worth a dime, but they tolerated. She'd come to the pen and she'd sit down and she'd sing and play the same song every time. <laughs> Blessed assure us, gee, I am mine. Oh, I a full taste of glory divine. She'd go back and sit down. They'd finish the service. One day the pastor was at the bank talking to the bank president. The pastor said, look, I'm new in town. Been here about six months. We'd like for you and your family to come visit the church sometime. The banker said, we might show up sometime. The very next Sunday morning, the pastor was sitting on the platform waiting for the service to start. By 10.30, service time, in walked the banker and his wife. The pastor looked back there, his eyes lit up. He thought to himself, praise God, they showed up. They ushered the banker and his wife to their seat. But no more than the banker and the wife, his wife got seated, in walked tongue-tied Mary. The pastor looked back there and he sunk down in his chair. He said, Lord, please don't let them all sing today. He said, I'm trying to get this church to grow and the banker and his wife are here. He said, of all Sundays, please don't let them all sing today. They started the service and the pastor was on pins and needles. About halfway through the praise and worship, the power of God was flowing. They had a definite pause and tongue-tied Mary stood up. She blurted out, preach up! God, God want me to sing this morning. The pastor got ready to call her down. But the Holy Ghost got hold of his tongue. Before he knew what he was saying, the pastor said, Come on, Mary, come to the pen and sing for us. Mary sat down at the pen and she, she sang and played the same song, just like she always had. What's it assure us? Gee, I am mine. She finished the song. She went back and sat down to finish the service. The next day, the pastor was at the bank and he was talking to the bank president. He said, listen, we saw you and your family in church yesterday. We were so glad that you came. The banker said, we were glad that we came too. The banker said, we haven't been in a service like that in a long, long time. The pastor said, well, we want you and your family to come again. The banker said, we might come again on one condition. He said, there was something that happened in that service on Sunday morning that we liked more than anything else. And the pastor looked at him and he said, well, what was it? The praise, the worship, the, the, the singing? The banker looked at him and tears began to stream down his cheeks. He said, no, preacher. He said, it was when that little tongue-tied lady yes. came to the pen and sang, oh, blessed assurance, yes. Jesus is mine. Amen. 
He said, I felt the fire of God burning in my soul when she sang that song that I hadn't felt in church since I was just a little boy. He said, Preacher, if you'll let her sing next Sunday morning, my wife and I will be back. We need the Holy Ghost fire of God burning bright so that people can come to church and enjoy their, their experience with God and the presence of God. They will only have the fire to fall when we guarantee that God gets all the glory. Yeah. How do you do that? Elijah had these people pour 12 barrels of water over those altars. There wasn't any way that anybody could say that that fire started out of a spontaneous combustion. The water drenching made it impossible for the false prophets of Baal to discount what God had done. Then, will only have the fire of God to fall when we are willing to sacrifice our most precious possessions to God. When we're willing to give God everything. But you know, the truth is, we've got people in just about every one of our churches that haven't given a sacrifice to God in years. There are some that have squeezed that nickel so hard they've got the inch <coughs> right the buffalo on the back. <laughs> I know people, and you do too, they wouldn't put 10 cents in the offering plate to watch a bicycle ride a, a, a black snake backwards through a hailstorm. They just won't give to God. And there are some people that when the offering plate is put, it goes in front of them, they social distance themselves <laughs> from the offering plate like it's got the coronavirus. When's the last time you heard about someone giving in the church giving the equivalent of their house payment? on their car payment to a ministry that's really doing the work for God. The truth is, we need to put up or shut up. It's going to take money to do things for God the way that we've got to do it. And, and then the fire will fall. Listen, when we begin to pour our tears of repentance and compassion out on the altar. You see, the people in that day poured 12 barrels of water on the altar and the fire fell. When God's people will begin to pour their tears out on the altar, the fire of God will fall. Jeremiah said, I could wish my head were water and my eyes were a fountain of tears that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that uh, the people may hear that, that thou art the Lord God. Nehemiah the prophet, when he came out of, back out of bondage and he saw the wreckage and the ruins and the walls of the city, he saw the apostasy of the people of God. And, and in the book that bears his name, Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, It came to pass, I sat down and wept. When's the last time you wept so hard that you couldn't even stand up? You had to sit down and bury your face in your hands and wake tears of compassion for your unsafe family. Peter, when he realized that he'd sinned and three times denied his Lord, it says he went out and wept bitterly. When you sin, does it drive you to your knees in repentance? Or do you just go blaring on down the street as if nothing ever happened and living as, you, as if you were as big as God and you pushed him around? And, and when every pagan force was at his zenith, the tears of the Apostle Paul knelt at the opposition and paved the gospel highway across the western world where it says in Acts 20.31, Therefore, watching, remember that by a space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day yes. with tears. Don't leave off those two words. And with tears. And Jesus, when in the days of his flesh, when he offered up prayers and supplication to him that would hear it, and was, and they, and was heard with strong cries and tears. Today, from every section of the country that I travel, people ask, why can't we have old-time, old-fashioned Holy Ghost revivals like we used to? Where are our revivals? And I have a question, an answer, a question for that question. Where are our tears? Do we want something for nothing? Do we want a bargain counter basement sell from God? There isn't one. There is a price to be paid, and if you'll pay the price, you'll get the product. You really want revival? Do you really want revival? Let it start with you down on your knees at the altars, weeping before God. A fire will start a fire. A fire will spread. You be that fire, and you watch it spread. Yes. There's something about tears, Pastor Jim. Whether the burning the 
cheeks of David are scolding the palms of Peter. That bear a message straight from the heart of man to the heart of God that stab and pierce like an arrow and get through. Hear me. The people in that day poured the water out on the altars and the fire fell. If we will begin to pour the water of our tears out on the altars, the fire of God will fall. And finally, the fire will fall when they learn how to pray. I'm talking about really praying, fervently. You want the fire of God to fall in your life? I know you do. You want the fire, the Holy Ghost fire of God to fall fresh in this church body? I know this isn't popular preaching, but I've got to preach to you what God gave me. Just the way he gave it to me, I'm going to give it to you. When the church learns how to pray, Here's what he like to pray. Hear me, O Lord. Verse 37. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. When they learn how to pray a prayer of repentance for not drawing the line, for not getting near to the man of God, for not being willing to sacrifice our most precious possessions, for not giving God all of the glory. When we begin to pray a prayer of compassion for the, for the lost, for the unsaved. Only then will real Holy Ghost revival break loose in our lives, in our homes, in this church body. The only hope that we have in these last days is for the fire of God to fall fresh in our nation. And the fire of God is not going to fall fresh in our nation, Pastor Jim, until it falls fresh in the church. Now your heads, close your eyes, open your hearts all over the building. Spirit of the living God, do everything that needs to be done in every area. According to the word of God, I speak victory in everybody's life that's here. If you're in this building this morning, you'd say, Brother Todd, I'm here this morning. And I realize that my fire is not burning bright like it should be. Perhaps at one time your, holy, your fire was burning bright. The fire of God was burning bright in your life. Perhaps the fire has grown dim in your prayer life and your devotion time to the Word of God. And you need the fire of God to be poured in fresh. Perhaps you're here this morning and, and at one time you had a hot, on fire, soul winner's fire. But as you search your heart, you realize that you're not where you need to be in your soul winning. Maybe you're here this morning and at one time you faithfully were serving the Lord, but as you search your heart, you realize that you're not really serving the Lord the way that you know that you should be. So with nobody looking around, if you're in this building and you'd say, Brother Todd, I'm in this building, and I realize that we'll start with this area right here. As I search my heart, I realize that my life is not really being lived for God. But I want it to be. I want my fire to burn bright, my spiritually, but I'm not really in right relationship with God. If that's you this morning, with nobody looking around, we'll start with that area right there. If you're in this building, and the Lord is dealing with you because your life is not in right relationship with the Lord, you'd say, Brother Todd, when you pray, I want you to pray for me. If that's you this morning, slip your hand up right now, quickly, if that's you. Anybody at all, you say, that's me. God's dealing with me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Now listen carefully. If you're in this building this morning and you say, I'm in this building, but I realize that I need the fire of God to fall fresh in some area of my life. My prayer time, uh, uh, my, my uh, Bible study, my, my church attendance, my giving, my tithing, my, my soul winning, uh, some other area perhaps you'd say, there's an area that I need the fire of God to fall fresh in my life, in my relationship with Him. At least one or more areas that I need the fire of God to fall fresh. Lift your hand if that's you. You'd say, that's me, a lot of hands. Anybody else? And if you're watching by way of YouTube right now, I want you to know that right where you're sitting or right where you're standing, as you just cry out to God, the Holy Spirit is going to do the work in you. That, he, that God desires to do. If you'll just cry out to God right now. So I want those of you that lifted your hand that are in this sanctuary, if you will, right where you're seated, to stand to your feet, if you will. Stand to your feet. This may apply to many of you, and it may uh, uh, apply just...
this to a handful. Listen carefully. If you're in this building this morning and you say, I'm in this building and I realize this morning that there are areas of my life that God is dealing with me about, that I need the fire of God to purge and just to make me more like Jesus. Maybe things that are not in and of themselves bad things, but there are areas that need to be purged out of you so that God can bring you to the next level in Him. He loves you this morning just the way that you are, and He's going to bring you to where you need to be. I want those of you that are standing, if you will, to make your way to the front here, and let's line up across the front. I want to have special prayer, and I believe the Holy Ghost fire of God is going to fall fresh this morning. Holy Spirit of the living God, and I want to lay hands on every one of you that came, that are here this morning, that, that are in this building. And if you have not come yet, you'd say, that's me. And I need the fire of God to fall fresh in my life in some area. If that's you this morning, I want you to come right now if you want to join us. And I want to ask for anybody else that's in this building this morning that would say, I need special prayer. Maybe you're here this morning and you need healing in some area of your life. You know what? There is a healing agent in the fire of God. And so fire is also healing. So if you're here this morning, you say, I need healing. Come to the altar because God wants to do the work in you that needs to be done in every area in the name of Jesus. And I want to ask you, if you will, those of you that came, if you will, just pray this with me out loud. Lord Jesus, consume me every ounce of my being. Make me what you call me and set me apart to be. Since you died for me, I'm going to live for you. From this day forward, with your help in every area of my life. Now let your Holy Ghost fire fall fresh in my life in Jesus' name. Now I want you, as I'm laying hands on you, I want to ask you, if you will, just begin to worship God out loud. Just begin to worship, whether you're in the altar or in the pew, just begin to worship God out loud. Now, Father, I anoint with oil and I speak the fire of God falling fresh on my brother right now. And I speak healing in every area. And I speak consumption with the fire of God in every area, even now. By the stripes of Jesus, I speak complete healing in Jesus' name, even now. Now, Father, let your fire fall fresh. Father, I anoint with oil in the name of Jesus. I speak the fire of God consuming my brother, even now. According to the word of God. I speak victory Lord God. Let your fire fall fresh. Do your work. Have your way. And I lay hands to my brother. And you said he would recover. Every area I speak victory. And strength. And fresh fire. I speak it done. Father in Jesus name. Let your power flow. Father. According to the word of God. You said to lay hands on the sick and they would be covered. So I speak fresh fire. And I speak fresh healing. And I speak fresh victory. Yes. In the name of Jesus, according to the word of God. Fresh, Lord God. Fresh fire. Fresh baptism in your Holy Ghost. Anointing that destroys the yoke. Now begin to thank you. Father, let it flow. Father, let fresh fire fall. The anointing that destroys the yoke. Victory and strength. And fresh fire. Lord, bring us to a higher level in you than we have ever been before. Let your fire fall fresh in every area of my brother's life and his family. And every attack of the devil on his family, I speak victory right now, according to the word of God. I speak fresh strength being poured in, in the name of Jesus, according to the word of God. Holy God, freshness of your spirit. Yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let your fire fall. Let your anointing flow. Spirit of God, do your work. Have your way. Accomplish what you want done. We give you permission, Lord. Let fresh fire from heaven fall. Let your anointing that destroys the yoke fall. Fresh. Do your work. Have your way. Spirit of God, let your power flow. Let it flow the anointing. 
the word of God. Fresh fire, fresh power, fresh anointing. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. We're only ghost power. The Spirit of God do your work. Let your work be, let your fire fall fresh. Consume every ounce of our being. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let it fall. Let your fire fall fresh. Father, we want everything that you have. We give you permission to do everything that you want done. We ask you to mold us into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. We speak victory in every area. Let your power flow. Let your anointing flow. Holy Ghost power. Spirit of God, do your work. Fire of God, consume us. Let your power flow. Holy Spirit, do your work. Yes, Lord. Lord, I speak healing. By the stripes of Jesus, I speak complete healing. Let your fire fall fresh. Let your healing fire fall fresh. In the name of Jesus. Do your work. That's what you say. I'm a child. Let it flow. Your anointing. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Holy Ghost power. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. We love you. We need you. Now, Lord, according to the Lord's God. All stuff is junk. I speak the power of God to raise Jesus from the dead. Flow right now. There you go. The Spirit of God to raise Jesus from the dead. Holy Spirit. That's the old me. Give you permission to make us and mold us into your image. And accomplish it as all that you want done. Make us everything that you want us to be. The Spirit of God, do your work fresh. Let your anointing fall fresh. Let your power fall fresh. Let your fire consume every bit of us, Lord. Consume every ounce of our being and make us everything that you called us and set us apart to be. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now yes, let the anointing flow. Father, I speak to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in these people. Peter commands you to be healed in Jesus' name even now. By the stripes of Jesus, I speak complete healing in these feet. Lord, send your word and heal these feet according to the word of God. I plead the blood of Jesus over this vessel, over this yeah. precious young lady, over this precious child. <coughs> speak it done. Everything that you have and desire to do in the name of Jesus, according to the word of God. I speak it done in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now, Father, I pray for this precious young lady that you will do the work in it that you want done, protecting from the wiles of the devil. Yes. Do the work in it that you want done yes. in every area. Let your power flow fresh in yes. the name of Jesus. Let your fire fall fresh and purge him and purify him and protect his mind and protect him, Lord God, from everything that the devil has in store. And I ask you to pour your spirit in fresh in every area. In the name of Jesus, according to the word of God. According to the word of God. Sherry, come and I'm going to pray for you and Pastor Jim. Father, I thank you for this precious couple. And Lord, as I lay hands on this couple, I plead the blood of Jesus over this couple. And Lord, every attack of the devil on their home, on their family, on this church body. I thank you for fresh strength of the Holy Ghost fire of God falling in this couple. And you doing the work through this couple that you want done and making this couple what you want this couple to be. So Father, I pray and ask you just to purge and purify everything in us. Take it out. Everything in us that's not pleasing to you so that we can more effectively 
serve you and lead under your leading of the Holy Spirit. And Father, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the doorpost of this home and this church body. And Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you in advance for the many, many people that are going to be traveling down the, the road and they are going to be drawn yes. to this place, Lord God, because healing and deliverance yes. and victory flows yes. through this body. So Lord, I thank you for the cross of Calvary and I thank you, Lord God, for what you are in the process of doing through this ministry and through this couple and through the leadership in this church body. And I speak the strength of God flowing fresh in the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus according to the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Everybody in this building, lift your hands if you will. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the doorpost yes. of every family and every home yes. that makes up this church body. And for those that are watching by way of YouTube, I speak and plead the blood of Jesus Christ over this church body. And Father, I pray and ask you to bind up the works of the devil off of every one of their families, every one of their homes, and over every ministry that is represented among these that are in this sanctuary and watching by way of social media. I speak victory by the power of the cross, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Word of God, by the power, by the power of your Word, Lord, in Jesus' name, I speak victory yes. according to the Word of God. And Lord, we thank you in advance for fresh fire being poured in to every area of our lives, our family, our home, this church body, so that we can be all that you have called us and said us not to be. I speak it done in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Now begin to worship and magnify and lift your voice to it. Holy! Holy God! I thank you for what you're in the process of doing through this church body. And I thank you for what you're going to do for the future. In the name of Jesus, according to the word of God. I speak it done. I speak it done. I speak it done. I speak it done. In the name of Jesus. Now look right up here. Listen carefully. You already know, because there is a mighty, mighty man of God that the Lord has brought here to this place at this time. It's no accident that in this time in history that God has brought this church body together. It's not an accident. It's not a coincidence. You can see that our nation is in need, in desperate need right now of the truth to be preached. Of a church body that is going to do what needs to be done. God has brought this church body into existence at such a time as this in these last days. So let's be sensitive to doing everything that God is instructing us to do so that we can be positioned to accomplish what God has for us to do. Every one of us have got a ministry that God desires to accomplish. Right. Not just your pastor, right. but every one of you have got specific things that God is going to do through you. That's why He's working in you right now is to get you at a higher level of intensity to be prepared for what He's in the process of doing through you in these last days in Jesus' name. Amen? Pastor, come. <coughs> I, uh, if you know who you are, <clears throat> but I just got a few words for you. You came home 
this morning for Brother Todd's and Sister Angie's ministry, Revival Fires. You can go ahead and make your check out if you're making a check to the Cross of Christ Church, and you typically do. And we'll take care of that and get everything to them shortly. I'm going to ask you this. Were you blessed this morning? Were you blessed? I'm going to ask it again. Ethan! 